It's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Wayne Franklin, um, well known in the Houston community, but now at Phoenix Children's. And he's going to talk with us about uh, mitral valve disorders that result in left heart obstruction. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Phillips, and of course, Dr. Lynn uh, Cedars and McGillivray for the invitation uh, to come back to Houston. Uh, I've been gone for a couple months, and it's always good to come back. Uh, so thank you very much, I think. Do I advance? So Phoenix versus Houston. Uh, I thought I was getting a good baseball team. Uh, Diamondbacks didn't, uh, I don't even think they finished with a winning record, and the Astros are awesome still. So check goes to Houston. Football, OK? Uh, the, the Texans have been pretty bad recently, but they're not as bad as the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Arizona has one win and six losses, and Texans have won five in a row. Yes, go Texans. First place in the AFC South, which is a weak division, but I'll take first place. Uh, but um, this is my drive to work, so I'll take that as a plus. And uh, hey, free parking, who can complain about that? So uh, maybe you can Uber around here. But anyway, so it's good to be back uh, in Houston. Uh, so a brief overview, you know, I have the... Um, the tough job of coming last before the whole morning break, we kind of went right through that 9 o'clock break, so I'll try not to bore you guys. And as Dr. Bott had mentioned, I'm going to really try to talk about anatomic things, um, not so much the, the physiology, because the physiology essentially is mitral stenosis. That's kind of what I've been tasked uh, to talk about. So we'll just mention a few things. Uh, parachute mitral valve, super valve mitral ring, and finish up with core triatriatum. So those are the congenital problems, but really a lot of mitral stenosis worldwide really is acquired. So I have to mention that because that's what you're going to see probably most in your cardiology and cardiac surgery practices. Uh, however, we're going to focus on the congenital, but these are things that you got to know because you're going to see most of this. So most of mitral stenosis is actually due to rheumatic fever, even still not so much in the U.S. because pediatricians and um, uh, primary care folks are giving antibiotics just off the cuff. And we don't really see a lot of rheumatic heart disease primarily unless people come from a developing country. There are some rare cars, causes, carcinoid, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, things that are connect, connective tissue disease can cause uh, uh, mitral valve disease. And then the mucopolysaccharidoses, which is often polyvalvar actually, affecting the mitral and often a tricuspid valve as well. And then the uh, very unusual L-A-O-T-O, -O, not L-V-O-2, but L-A-O-T-O, -O, left atrial outflow obstruction, which you can see in like a left atrial myxoma. Uh, if you have a obstructive uh, mitral, uh, a mechanical mitral valve or a ball valve thrombus, or if even you have endocarditis in a vegetation. So you have to know these because you're going to see those, but let's talk about the interesting stuff, which is the congenital stuff. Um, these are really the types of anatomic mitral stenosis. I think this is, here we go. So this is sort of the congenital part. We have, you might have an abnormal valve or abnormal ring. Um, this is more like hypoplastic left heart syndrome. That's obviously congenital. But, but these two are really what we're going to focus on <clears throat> this morning, which is a supervalve mitral ring. And you can see it here. If you have really a normal uh, two papillary muscles, a normal valve apparatus, but above, so above supra, above the mitral valve, you have this fibrous ring right here, which is going to obstruct inflow from the LA into the LV. or uh, what they call a, a parachute mitral valve, which is essentially a common or single papillary muscle that cinches down the mitral valve leaflets, and so they don't open very uh, properly, and so they also obstruct. So here's the parachute mitral valve, right? So you have a normal mitral valve apparatus here. You have two nice papillary muscles. You can see that healthy chordae tendinae and normal valve leaflets. This is sort of the typical mitral stenosis, if you will, but the focus is really here on the parachute mitral valve. And pay attention to this because, again, single pap, either it's truly a single papillary muscle or they're fused, but it's functionally a single papillary muscle to which the chordae tendinae adhere and really become obstructed and, and, and don't move very well. So if you look, right, this is a parachute. So this is the guy, the parachute, if you look at it, I think this is a nice little description that the guy is, this is your, your, your papillary muscle right here, these are his feet. So just think about it that way, both of the chordae are sort of like the, um, uh, the, the strings, if you will, of the um, parachutes. I don't know if this is going to play, but you can see this is an uh, echo here, the left side valve. You can see very thick and abnormal mitral valve tissue, a single papillary muscle here, and you know somewhat of a dilated left atrium, but this is a, a view of what you might look for for seeing a parachute mitral valve. This is going to need a lot of further inspection. You have to get different views. It probably deserves a, a TEE, but clearly look for that. You can see both uh, leaflets sort of going down towards one papillary muscle. 
Uh, this is the surgeon's view. So I like this view because I think it sh shows you nicely with the left atrium open of what it may look like. So again, normal mitral valve here. And here's your, here's your parachute mitral valve here. So I really think I like this. It sort of shows a th almost a 3D rendering of the sort of billowing of the mitral uh, leaflets here. And here's your mitral valve orifice or opening there. This is sort of variation of that uh, with the two sides here. And this one I haven't actually seen myself, but they call this a hammock valve, which sounds kind of comfortable, I guess, a hammock. But I'd have to talk to the surgeon, Dr. McGillivray, about that. But would also cause functional mitral stenosis. But again, left atrium opened up. Here you see the sort of billowing uh, mitral valve leaflets, and you can sort of see it parachuting up into the left atrium. Here's what it looked like on, sh on uh, long axis here. Again, uh, single uh, papillary muscle here. You can see the mitral valve is very abnormal. And again, you're going to see this right when you put the probe down and start to scan, right? So it's important to investigate this more as you uh, continue through the echo. The treatment really is surgery, and oftentimes these patients will present with, you know, symptoms of mitral stenosis, shortness of breath, maybe atrial fib uh, or a flutter. So that certainly needs to be worked up. So a few words about supervalve mitral ring. So the, the supervalve mitral ring, the fibrous ring is on the LA or the sort of superior side of the mitral valve. It separates, and this is important, we're gonna see this later, but it separates the mitral valve from both the left atrial appendage and the pulmonary veins. Okay, that's an important distinction. Deciding between you'll see the supervalve mitral ring and cord tritriatum. Can be associated with an abnormal mitral valve. So if you look at if you see it or suspect a mitral ring, look at the mitral valve apparatus itself, look at the chordae, certainly look at the uh, papillary muscles as well. And as you guys know, this is part of what they call Schoen syndrome, which is, a, as you know, is a, is a collection of serial left heart obstructive lesions. So mitral stenosis, uh, subaortic stenosis, or LV outflow tract obstruction, aortic valvar stenosis, supravalvar stenosis, and maybe even coarctation. And that was, as you know, described first by Dr. Shones in 1963. Um, and it's kind of nice that it's a little um, uh, adjective, I guess. It's, you know, when we say that the left side looks kind of small, the mitral valve looks kind of Shonesy. That's a medical term, Shonesy. Uh, so just think about that as that, as you, as that moves forward. Uh, here's what it looks like sort of as, as a cartoon. And again, mitral valve here, and then right above the valve is this ring. Again, is a fibrous ring right above the valve, but note, that the left atrial appendage is above, quote, above or superior or before, however you want to call it. It's before the, uh, the ring membrane right here. So this is really, you're going to see this is, quote, unquote, incorporated or it's going to be part of the pathology. Left atrium can dilate, uh, can certainly lead to uh, supraventricular arrhythmias as well. So this, uh, again, an example of what it look like, may look like on, on echo. You can see a very huge uh, left atrium, and there's atrial enlargement there, LV, and here's a supra valve mitral ring, you have a mitral valve here, but above there, there's this line, it's, it's a ring, and again, you'll need further um, exploration of this and interrogation because of that artifact, you can see it in multiple views, and, and even if you add Doppler, color, and pulse, it's gonna have a lot of uh, turbulence and it's gonna get a high gradient as well, too, so. Again, it's slightly different view. You can see here on TEE, right ventricle here, here's the right atrium, kind of a small-ish left ventricle, anterior mitral leaflet, and you can see here just something above the mitral valve, and that's your supra atrial ring, or supra valve mitral ring. So again, something to look at. You can certainly investigate it on TEE. And you're gonna throw Doppler across there, and you'll see that it's got a very high gradient. You'd suspect that, but you need to show that, and that's really gonna be the <clears throat> deciding point, if you will, along with symptoms to, to operate. So you can see here it's a very, very high gradient of, of a mean of 25, so quite uh, obstructive. Treatment again, surgery, once you see that, really doesn't respond to ballooning, uh, so a surgical intervention is usually the treatment. It's actually, you can just re uh, replace that, oftentimes maybe avoid, uh, you, can, you can excise the membrane, hopefully avoid replacement if the mitral valve is okay itself. Um, 3D echo, this is a cool application for that. I know they do a lot of that here uh, in the medical center. And this again is the left atrial or sort of surgeon's view, if you will. And this is a, a super valve mitral ring. You can see it, I think, quite nicely here with the opening. And again, this is the same patient, surgical rendering almost exactly the same. So it's great to see that there's correlation there. You can see the, the orifice, if you will, from the LA into the LV right there. You can imagine why there's a lot of uh, stenosis. So lastly, core triatriatum, AKA core. We, um, 
sort of say that a lot. You always have to think about this. If you see a left uh, a dilated left atrium or a funny looking left atrium or pulmonary veins that are engorged. And really, there are two. We worry about more on the left side, but there are two types, OK? Uh, it can either be a membrane that divides the left atrium or the right atrium. Left atrium is sinister. It's mean. It's bad, right? So left atrial is the one that we worry about, but there is a RA right atrium core tritratum dexter as well, too, just so you know that for the boards. Um, the sinister, the bad one on the left side is associated with um, septal defect as well as partial or total anomalous pulmonary venous return. So look for those other structures as well too and abnormalities if you suspect a core. And here's what it looks like. Again, left-sided problems, normal LV mitral valve is here and just above there is your core, is your membrane. But note that the left atrium is below or distal or past, if you will. So the obstruction is going to be up here, and the, and the left atrium quote is not affected. So there may not, there should be normal ish, if you will, uh, LA flow, LA pressure. And I mentioned that because this was on the boards. This is on the cardiology cert recertification boards, this is on the adult congenital boards. This is a classic board question because they'll show you a, a left sided structures, LA and LV, and they'll show you membrane, and you really have to see where is it. And of course, you can say it's either a core or a supervalve mitral ring, so know the differentiation of where those are. And along the lines, we'll talk about the treatment and then how do you differentiate that again from the mitral ring. But the treatment, again, is, is quite interesting. So it's a very high success rate. And again, usually it's for a mean gradient of about 10, so that would be severe. AS. Again, the, eight, the new guidelines really show that the, a lot of the times in the surgical studies, the means were much higher than that, 17, and some even ranged up to 40. So just note that patients can go a long time with plus or minus symptoms and still have uh, pretty significant gradients. Uh, sometimes they won't have a mean, a very high mean grade. It might just be less than eight, but symptoms or arrhythmias are a, uh, an indication to operate. So just note that. And then after repairs, the surgeons say it's quite gratifying because uh, they don't recur. Usually these membranes don't come back. And even getting mitral stenosis is not common because, again, the valve is spared, if you will. Um, and note that the pulmonary veins, even though they may be engorged or abnormal flow or very high pressure before, they usually do quite well afterwards without really pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary venous hypertension, either post-op. So this, again, just to show the two side by side you have on the uh, your your right, uh, screen's left, um, is the uh, core triatriatum. You see the membrane is here, left atrium, uh, excuse me, left atrial appendage is sort of spared. It's distal, if you will, to the obstruction versus, again, supervalve mitral ring. Just think about it just right above the mitral valve. So you see it right here, left atrium, and all of the left atrial appendage is included in this disease. So you'll see that as well, too. And I think, uh, again, just to get, you'll see this as well. So again, just some other things. If it's a core, the membrane tends to be more curved, if you will, just kind of grossly on, on echo and in the OR. Uh, during diastole, that moves towards the mitral valve. All, all the pulmonary veins drain proximally to the membrane. Uh, and the left atrium, again, is distal to the membrane in a core. In a mitral ring, it attaches at the base of the mitral valve, distal to the LA, OK? Just so you know, the, the, the ring or leaflets tends to move away from the mitral valve in, in diastole. And you'll notice even on Doppler that it looks like it's a, a prolonged abnormal leaflet. And pay attention to that because you will see that uh, on the boards. And you might even see that on a multiple choice test coming up as well, too. So thank you guys very much for your time. And I think we're going to take some questions. Yeah.